To another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And today I, I, I have a guest, I have a friend. Um, this, this, this young lady, we go back, way back, actually, as, as we were just talking um, earlier. Uh, and, 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 and this young lady goes by the name of Miss Kayla Keller, and she is the owner, the owner who's wearing her entrepreneurial hat today. <laughs> <laughs> She's the owner of High Level Fitness in therapy. Kayla, how are you doing? I'm doing great. No complaints. How are you? Good, good. All, all, all is good on this side. All, all is good on this side. So, so how, how, how does it feel? Like, like how does it feel? Because I know you launched the business. And of course, I know you've been, been, been in this industry, been in this space um, for, for a while. Um, but mm-hmm. how, does, how does it feel now for you to, you to give birth to this baby? Hey, um, it's, it's kind of been some mixed feelings, right? Being, being in the middle of a pandemic, it it was a little bit of fear, a little Mm -hmm. bit of, I don't know how this is going to go because, um, you know, there are people still out of work and, um, you know, battling cultural issues right now and things like that. So it was some fear at first, but I just decided to kind of take that step out on faith, um, with how shaky things in sports are right now us not really knowing if it's ever truly going to go back to normal or not Mm. uh staying you know under organized athletics was a bit of a risk I felt like on my side and so I had felt called to kind of do my own thing for a while and uh I just decided that hey might as well do it now better late than never so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said you you said you felt like it was a risk staying under organized athletic. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So um, the reason why I say that is first, when everything kind of first shut down, then because of because school closed, they automatically shut down athletics. Mm. So I was laid off for about four months, and I thought I had chosen a profession that would never go through that. I was always like, sports will never go anywhere. Everybody loves sports. I'm always going to have a job. Yeah. So it was a very humbling time for me of like, wow, you know, I've been in the field for 10 years now. I have, you know, these degrees and these certifications and not even any of that saved me. You know, Mm -hmm. I still got laid off. And so with how back and forth they were going with the guidelines. Are we going to have sports in the fall? Are we not, you know, watching what was happening in the pros, them starting to do stuff and then having to shut it back down because of outbreaks. It was just kind of like, you know, I I don't know how long this is going to go on. And I'm kind of nervous that I feel like I don't have control of my professional life right now. Mm. Are, are you one of the people that likes to you like to have control just like control and security i know that that's a thing but are you are you job security is pretty pretty high for me yeah um you know i i've been fortunate that i haven't really had to like question if i'm gonna have a job or not really until this happened and so for me it was i've been telling a lot of people during this time we're in a season of pivot and shift Mm. And if you can't pivot and shift right now, you're going to get left behind. So I really had to kind of dig into that deep reflection of, I know I still want to impact people's lives. I know I still want to help people, but man, being laid off for four months with literally like basically no notice was just like, oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared for this. So what now? And that's really what it came down to is I, I realized a lot of my identity was tied to my professional life. Mm. So I kind of had to take a seat back and be like, 
is that a good thing or a bad thing? Maybe I need to, you know, restructure how I'm moving a little bit because uh, if I feel like I'm questioning my purpose once my professional life has been removed, maybe I put too much focus on it. Dang, that's real. Kayla, that's real. You came with that real. <laughs> <laughs> man, 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 man. Yeah, I mean, that's that's super real. And and I, I really can appreciate how you said, just talking about the time about pivoting or shifting. Um, because I think a lot of people just in this time, well, not I think, a lot of people in this time have lost their, their livelihood. Um, a lot of people in this time, they haven't been able to pivot or they haven't made the decision to pivot. Uh, but but you say you felt like you were called to for, for for you to pursue what you're doing now. Talk talk a little bit more. Talk a little bit more about that calling. Talk that talk. Well, so uh, the past few years, I've had friends tell me like, "You just need to go ahead and do your own thing." You know, you you've showed you have you know longevity in the prof in the profession. You've worked with a lot of different um, groups as far as. You know, I've worked with middle school and high school athletes. I've worked with collegiate and pro athletes and even, you know, been fortunate enough to work with a couple Olympians. So it's like I've kind of been able to view the whole picture on the athletic side. And knowing how much of a personal passion I had for fitness and how many people kind of contacted me for, you know, either workout plans or nutrition plans or whatever – I was like, you know, there's got to be a way for me to just go ahead and combine both. And then I just get the ultimate gift of passion. So when I was kind of sitting there having those introspective talks with myself as well as in prayer and things like that, it was like, okay, I had this moment at the beginning of the pandemic of like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? This is all I've known. I'm freaking out. <laughs> and then as time went on, it was like, and I continued to have those, you know, reflective moments. It's just like, I know this isn't it for me. And I know that there's something better for me. So what is it? And it was just like over and over. I just kept getting that nudge in the back of like, I know you kept trying to put this to the back burner, but I'm challenging you to bring it to the front now. And I mean, I wrestled with it because I was just like, you know, there's a lot of people without work right now. A lot of people just don't have extra money. Um, you know, we don't know what's going on, if there's going to be another stimulus or not. There's just so many things, not to mention really the mental struggles that people are going through. Mm -hmm. um, and because such a, I'm such a huge mental health advocate, then for me, I was just like, you know what, I, I think this is what it has to be, is if I can help people from the comfort of their living room and knock out a 20 minute workout with them or whatever, and that's what fills them up for the next couple of days and they can kind of get a break from those clouds or whatever it is, um, then I feel like I'm still serving, you know, my purpose in that way, even though, you know, I'm laid off and I'm not physically seeing people. Um, so I know for me, it was like, I struggled a lot during the pandemic being unemployed and then not being able to go to the gym on top of it. Mm. There was some hard days. And so I had to sit there and think, well, I know I'm not the only one, you know, and I was checking in a lot on my athletes. A lot of them were really struggling at home, whether it was from previous uh, mental health stuff that they had going on or what their current home life was developing into because of the pandemic. Um, and it, you know, people, people have been struggling. So I was like, you know what, I think, I think I've got to do this and I feel, you know, it's a little uncomfortable and it is, <laughs> it makes me fearful at some times, but it's like, I feel like ultimately this is what I was pushed into. And, um, it's kind of given me that like new breath of fresh air of like, yeah, there's still a whole lot of stuff going on in the outside world, but if I can still help people in some way, then I feel like I'm still fulfilling my purpose. 
Yeah, and I, 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 I really am I'm glad you actually said that and even the piece about the breath of fresh air uh, because the last guest I actually had on, she said, when passion meets purpose, you get peace. And when she said, I said, oh my goodness. And, and I feel like you're, you're coming into that, that, like, I feel like you're coming into that place of peace because yeah, there, there's things uncertain. Yes, there's problems. We all have problems. We all have challenges, but yet you're able to, you know, you're able to rest easy at night knowing that you're doing something and, and you're making your impact and, and, and definitely ma making your footprint in the world. So good job, Kayla. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the irony of it is when I made my vision board in January, right? I'm sure everybody that made their vision boards in January are looking at them now like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> but um, ironically, my word for the year was impactful. Mm. And I remember just looking at that about a month ago and being like, wow, I had no idea that that's what my manifestation would look like. But it also kind of made me feel good in that moment of like, I still somehow stayed on track. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of like the phrase that says, uh, tell God your plans. And well, no, man, man plans, man or woman plans, God laughs, right? Right. So, uh, I mean, ultimately, I still think that that's awesome. You know, you doing impactful work and then just to tie it back around to the, the, the mental health piece that you were sharing on. Um, you know, m mental health is, is, is big for me. I, I love sharing on that. But one of the best ways, and you know this, one of the best ways to, you know, decrease stress and one of the best ways to, to be able to relax yourself is, is getting in a good workout, getting in some sweat and, you know, getting the opportunity to just get out some of that energy and get that breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. You get to focus on something else during that time. You don't have to think about, Oh, I got to get this, this, and this done. The focus at that time is, all right, let me bang these reps out real quick. <laughs> let me get ready for my bikini in two weeks. Like, you know, hey, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we, we work through the winter so we can, so we can show out in the summer. Or, or right, whenever the world opens right. up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. so, but, oh, okay, okay, K Kayla. So when, when, when did this all happen? Like, when did this first start? Like, because I, I, I don't, because I, I mean, me, me and you've known each other, you know, b before. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I don't know how long you've had this passion. So take us back, rewind the clock, and take us back in your story, and, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, just just share like like a little bit of your background and and then how you got to this point. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I went to undergrad at IU in the University of Go Hoosiers, and um, then uh, I came down to UT Tyler. So my first year, I served as the grad assistant, and then um, was promoted to assistant for the last three years that I was there. Um, I worked with honestly almost every team that was there, but um, primarily basketball, just because I'm a huge basketball person at heart. Um, so I, w I was there and, you know, towards the end of my undergrad studies, I interned with St. Vincent Sports Performance. So that's how I started to get involved with like NBA pre-draft stuff and everything like that. So when I left UT Tyler, I came back to St. Vincent Sports Performance and worked for them full time. Uh, I started helping with like NFL combine stuff and uh, continued with like the NBA pre-draft stuff. And then I also worked full time out at a, a local high school. So I was there for about two years and then worked for court physical therapy in Louisville for, for four years. And that's what I finished up this summer. So, uh, you know, I was involved in a lot of great things at Brown. I coached the dance team, you know, took care of all the athletes, just a lot of really fun stuff, um, really feeding into the kids and honestly, like um, learning more about kind of the mental mental health aspect of things and, um, you know, was able to develop a program for the district to ask, actually, unfortunately, COVID has postponed it, but basically developing a series for uh, mental health topics for athletes, for student athletes. So, you know, we were bringing in 
past athletes who've played in the pros or collegiate, all different levels that are basically, you know, coming and talking to the kids and saying, hey, I get the performance anxiety aspect. I still deal with it even at this level. So like, I know what it feels like and you shouldn't feel, you know, ashamed if you're dealing with that. Um, so, you know, basically just talking about different topics and it was fantastic. The school district is in full support of it. And despite my departure, I really do hope that the, the school district is able to carry that out once uh, we can have large gatherings again. Um, oh. But, from the uh, the fitness side of it, I mean, I've just been very physically fit for ooh, probably like almost 15 years now. So um, I've I've just had various people reach out through the years and ask for me to do it on my own, and I just kept being like, oh, I'll just kind of do it as like a side hustle, but I'm not really, you know, trying to add. A whole lot to my plate right now and uh, then it was just like I don't know throughout the years I just kept kind of getting the itch more and more of like I really want to be able to combine my athletic training skills with my fitness knowledge um, you know and basically just develop like a one-stop shop so it's like if I get somebody that comes in and is like man I really struggle with patellar tendonitis um, then I can be like, well, this is what we can do to modify your exercises. And that way you can still get a workout in, but we're also addressing the patellar tendonitis side of it. Hmm. So that's kind of the aspect that like the typical personal trainer doesn't have to offer is kind of like the sports medicine side of it. So it's a lot more, like a, mo a lot more all-encompassing approach, I guess. Gotcha. Got can, can you talk a little bit more about just what's what's the difference between what what you do and and the train and the trainer side? I believe I think that's what you just said. Like, can you can you just separate the difference between like what you do now with your business and what like just what a typical trainer would do, or like the benefits of your business? Does that make sense? It does. Excellent. So like, obviously, first and foremost, this is not, I am not talking down on personal trainers. They are excellent at what they do. Um, they, their education is just not based on sports medicine. That's what an mm. athletic trainer's education is based on is sports medicine. Mm. So I, in the profession, you become very, very well versed in, uh, injury prevention and, um, uh, you know, corrective exercise type of things where we should be able to identify imbalances and also just understanding what's going on at the injury level if someone does have an injury. So let's say I have someone who signs up with me and they're like, hey, I'm about five months post ACL. I'd, I've already used all my PT visits. This is where I'm at, this, that, and the other. Cool. I know exactly how to handle that because I already have all the knowledge from what it's like to rehab beginning to end with a post ACL. Mm. But then I also have the personal training side of it that comes in and says, all right, how can we marry these together? How can I keep in mind their rehabilitation restrictions if they have any during that time? And how do I also keep in mind that like, they want to either lean out or they want hypertrophy on the affected leg because they've had atrophy from the injury. Um, so when someone says like, Ooh, this really makes my back hurt. And then we kind of get into the discussion and it's realized like, Oh, this is kind of a chronic injury and you've been dealing with it for a long time. So why don't we try this? That's just kind of the advantage that I have over like a traditional personal trainer. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Wow. I never even, I never even thought about that, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you broke it down because I never even thought about just the difference and the variation and just like there's certain tracks to become trainer. And then on this side, sports medicine. And so, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's pretty dope. So, so what, what, so what services do you all, do you, do you all offer? 
So mainly right now we're virtual because of COVID mm. restrictions. So, um, you know, it's, it's home workouts. Um, I do, uh, the, the first session is complimentary. Everyone gets that no matter what. Um, and that session is, we go through everything from like what your eating habits are like to your medical history, if you have um, a past injury history, and then we go through a screening. And so with the screening, I identify if we're dealing with like any over or underactive muscles, if we've got some flexibility or mobility issues, things like that, so that I know going forward in their fitness plan, how we can incorporate that stuff in so that we're kind of doing that more like um, full picture, right? Mm -hmm. Because if we've got, if we have a weak foundation, how are we supposed to have a strong house on top? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I think this is de definitely very, very unique, especially in this time, um, just, just with the work that you do and now everything going virtual. But I think it's an amazing opportunity um, because people all over the world can connect with you. People all over the world can be like, hey, hey, Kayla, I'm trying to, you know, I, ha I have these goals and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to accomplish them. So I wanted to hit you up and... Another thing I think is pretty dope is that even before COVID hit and even before and even when gyms were open and everything like that, uh, I don't know what the percentage is, but I feel like I read somewhere, I saw somewhere that a lot of people are fearful of going to the gym anyway, just because potentially uh, based on, you know, where their self-confidence is or, or, or things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So this is another like avenue or outlet um, to where people can, you know, be able to build up that confidence and you know get, get things in place to where they want them to where they feel more confident you know going out and being a part of the world again absolutely and i mean you know it's i can provide uh gym-based plans as well but for me i need to uh physically see beforehand what that form looks like and things like that um i'm not really comfortable wrecking uh, recommending exercises to people not knowing if their form is correct. If I'm not mm. going to be there, I've got to make sure they're doing it correctly because injury prevention just rates so high with me. I don't want, you know, it, my goal is not for anyone to get hurt. So I usually take those extra measures to make sure that I'm ensuring that they're taking care of themselves. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so I'm, I'm curious. I have to ask you this question, Kayla, because I can't ask nobody else. But <laughs> like when, like when it, when it comes to, like when it comes to CrossFit, right. And I know this is just so mm, random. I have strong opinions. I'm ready for the question. I, I feel, I feel, <laughs> I feel like the question came up because I think me and you talked about this like a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. But like, what, like t talk to me about CrossFit um, because I know that's like one of the, I know it's like a big phase right now. And I guess it's been for a couple of years, but, but just, just, just talk, talk to me about CrossFit. Yeah. So um, I personally, okay. As in Kayla Keller, I personally am not a, a huge supporter of CrossFit. Um, I think it's gotten better than it used to be. I do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there was a whole lot of proper coaching education going on. So that's why, you know, I don't know if you remember Dr. Fiesler and Dr. Tabola at UT Tyler, but I spent a full semester with them in their orthopedic clinic and they were the same as me where they were just like, I literally hate CrossFit because of how many injuries they see from it mm. you know we're talking like ruptured discs um rhabdomyolysis oh, whoa, 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 uh, whoa, whoa. What, what is what is that rhabdomyolysis. rhabdomyolysis yeah what is that yeah so it's basically like the body starts to break down your muscle because oh. it doesn't have enough time to really adapt to the volume that you're putting on it so like oh. you know if somebody decides like I'm going to do 200 squats in whatever, three minutes or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing out something random. Uh -huh. But that, that's, 
like that that high volume is just like way too much for the body to catch up to. So like quite literally what happens is it just starts to break the muscle down and then your body like excretes the muscle through your urine. Obviously not solid. It's in liquid form, but um, it, it can be for sure like a medical emergency. It is a medical emergency. So um, yeah, so that stress fractures are pretty common. So it's, you know, the, the workouts are designed to be like these really, really high repetitions that you have to get done in a certain amount of time. It's like boom, 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 boom. There's like improper rest breaks and stuff like that. I know every gym is not like that. So this is not a blanket CrossFit thing. This is just based on my overall observation as well as conversations with orthopedic doctors as well as other athletic trainers. Uh -huh. um, and personally, it's just, I, I just don't really think the body is well suited for those types of workouts. Fair enough. But it's grown, you know, and people really... They feel like, you know, they like the family unit of it, which I totally mm -hmm. understand. There's definitely a social aspect. So for me, if we know that it's going to continue to stay around, which I don't necessarily think is bad, but if it's going to continue to stay around, there just has to be like more stringent coach training. Fair enough. That's, that's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Kayla, really, really quick, let, let people know where they can find you, and then we're going to go ahead and transition to the two-minute drill. But, let, but let, just let, let people know where, where they can find you and how they can connect with you uh, at this time. Sure, yeah. So um, on Instagram, our handle is High Level Fit, and our website is www.highlevelfitnessandtherapy.com. Um, and as a special treat to all the beyond the wall listeners, I will offer 15% off your first, first session. So um, just make sure to, to bring up that you've listened today. Um, and uh, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Well, that's, you know, that's, that, that's nice. That's really nice of you. Uh, that's really nice of you. Um, so now, like I said, we're gonna transition. We're gonna transition. Uh, and into the two minute drill. And I know we talked before, I told you a little bit about the two minute drill, but the two minute drill, for those of you out there listening, this is your first time. The two minute drill is where we do some rapid fire questions. We like to have a little fun and uh, just get inside your head. Just, just see, just see what, what you're thinking about, see what your thoughts are. So are you ready, Kayla? I'm ready, game time. Okay, game time. Yeah, here we go. So, so here we go. Most underrated cereal. I'm gonna go with Kix. The regular I'm probably ones. Probably showing my age. Yeah. The regular. Kicks. No, not the fruit ones. The regular ones with no sugar. I put sugar in. I was about it, to say you have to yeah. put sugar. If not, then. Uh, next question. Uh, your your Netflix show of your net your quarantine Netflix show of preference. I'm gonna go with Prime, and it's been a different world. I'm old school. I like Pri to watch Prime? the old school show. Yeah, oh. Prime TV. Uh, okay, I might have to look that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the last book you read? Ooh, J.K. Rowling's most recent one. I forget what it was called, but it's part of the Hunger Games series. Okay. I read that in like two days. Okay, okay, wow. Your favorite podcast? Beyond the Ball, of course. That's well played. I, I, I think people <laughs> think I put that in there just to get people to say it, but I promise I don't. Uh, your fav favorite food? Pizza. What kind of pizza? Just cheese. It's so bad, but I just love it so much. That's funny. And then one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Utilize your resources, especially since they're free to you as a student athlete. Take full advantage of all your resources. There we go. You successfully made it through. And here's just one bonus question, just for bonus. Uh, who was the who's the next guest that you would like to see me interview on Beyond the Ball? Hmm. I think you should have Tina. She can Tina, kind of talk uh, about her uh, her injury journey in college and, 
you know, she's another entrepreneur and doing big things for herself. So I'm I'm so glad you said that because I've told her forever ago. I said, Tina, I'm ready. And for everybody out there listening, so uh, I, I'll, I'll give a little bit of backstory. So I'm not sure if it's I and Tina. So me and Kayla both have a friend named Tina because Tina and I played on the basketball team at UT Tyler. And then Kayla was uh, one of the trainers there at the time. And then uh, we, Tina spent a lot of time in the training room. I spent a lot of time in the training room. Mm-hmm. And, and then now we all know each other and now we're all connected. I'm glad you said that, Kayla, because now I'm going to cut this piece of the clip and I'm going to send it to her and I'm going to say, right. hey, now you have to do it. Now you have to do it. Right. Oh, I'm calling you out, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, man. But, uh, Kayla, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to hop on, you know, just, just hang out with, with the ballers. And I yeah. or me, I get that so confused and I don't care which way is the right way. And I don't feel bad about it. Um, <laughs> well, w- one more time, tell people where they can find you and uh, tell people how they can connect with you, please. Yeah. So I actually misspoke on the website earlier. My bad. But it's www.highlevelfittherapy.com. And then on Instagram, it's high level fit. So you can also find the website in the bio on uh, Instagram. But yeah, give us a follow. Give us a like. Um, and shoot me, shoot me an email. Like I said, I'm offering that discount for listeners. So just make sure to, to bring up the podcast when you're ready to get started with me. Dope, dope. And I thought you said it right the first time. It sounded like you said the same thing, but either way, we're going to have the link. I said the full company name, you know. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Quarantine brain. It's a thing. Quarantine brain. Is that really a thing? It is. I was reading an article about it a couple weeks ago. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> well, uh, well, once once again, Kayla, thank you for, for hanging out. And uh, to all the ballers out there, be sure to follow. Be sure to follow, 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 follow Kayla. Uh, get connected because ultimately we all want to look good for the summer. We all want to look good for winter. So stop playing yourself and go ahead, follow her, and then get right on the fitness tip. And be sure to Uh, Subscribe to the podcast if you are not already subscribed and leave a helpful review. We would definitely appreciate it. And we hope it's five stars. But until next time, I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Fall. Beyond the Fall.